This is Natalia, and Natalia is a sweet little girl from the Ukraine. Or is she? Because her adoptive parents claim that she is an adult and a sociopath, passing herself off as a seven-year-old child who had every intention of murdering them. And it's true what they say that there's two sides to every story. But today we can finally pick a side, as the truth about Natalia's age has finally been revealed. But before we get into that, let's recap the events leading up to this. This is the case of Natalia Grace. Natalia Grace Bennett was born in the Ukraine and was given up for adoption. Her adoption history is a little unclear, but it is believed that she spent time in group homes and lived with over 30 different foster families. And in 2008, Natalia came to the US when she was reportedly only five years old and she was adopted by a family. However, she didn't stay with them very long and was returned to the adoption agency which unfortunately is not an uncommon occurrence. And around that time, Christine and Michael Barnett received an unexpected call from an adoption agency in Florida. Christine had always wanted a larger family and she and her husband Michael already had biological children, including their son Jacob, who was a child prodigy with autism. They had previously hoped to expand their family through an adoption agency and were excited about adopting a little girl. Now they had already connected with a little girl from Haiti and planned to bring her to the US. However, in 2010, the devastating earthquake in Haiti made the adoption process complicated and they were unable to adopt the little girl. They had finally given up all hope on having their own daughter and that's when the adoption agency in Florida unexpectedly called them. It was definitely unusual to receive a cold call from an adoption agency, but despite finding it strange, they couldn't help but wonder if it was just a sign. So without wasting any more time, they swiftly booked a flight to Florida and headed to meet the little girl. Now, during an interview, Michael Barnett made it clear how strange it was meeting Natalia for the first time, as it was anything but normal. She approached them calling them mommy and daddy, even though she had just been separated from her previous family moments prior, who she also called mommy and daddy. Now, even though they found this undeniably strange, they couldn't help but shake off the feeling that this could just be fate. Now, according to Michael, the adoption agency didn't provide much information about Natalia, except for her name and her age. They were told that she was six years old at the time and received her medical records. But even the medical history only had records from one doctor's visit. They learned that she had a rare form of dwarfism and scoliosis. However, Christine had experience working with their son Jake and running a children's daycare, so she felt confident in her ability to take care of Natalia. Now, this particular form of dwarfism causes a delay in bone growth. As a result, Natalia would always be significantly smaller. And when the Barnetts saw that Natalia had been given up by all her previous families, they felt sympathy for her. I mean, who could abandon this sweet little girl? And despite only having 24 hours to make a decision, they chose to bring her home, shower her with love, and raise her as their own child. However, the Barnetts mentioned that it didn't take more than 24 hours for them to realize that something was off about Natalia, and the red flag started to appear. Michael remembered how his wife Christine was giving Natalia her first bath in her new home when suddenly Christine let out a scream. She urgently called for Michael to come to the bathroom. Michael would rush in as he sensed terror in her voice. And when he looked down at the bathtub, he was shocked by what he would see. And, and I looked and I looked down and Natalia at age six had full pubic hair. And she and I were absolutely stunned, and now we're very concerned and very worried. Is, is Natalia six? Is she older? We start using Google and we start using the internet to figure out maybe how old this new adopted daughter is. Now the Barnetts notice yet another strange occurrence involving Natalia. One day, Christine observed Natalia had red blood on her underwear, and she immediately concluded that it was her period. In an interview with Dr. Phil, Natalia herself 
mentioned that Christine had given her a tampon and instructed her to use it. Now, I know this is a sensitive topic, but it's vital to the story, so I'm including it. I'm not a medical expert by any means, but if my wife had informed me about this, there would be many concerns on my mind before jumping to this conclusion, as I'm also just assuming that there could be many different explanations as to why this would be happening. However, regardless of the reasons, Christine was convinced that Natalia was having her period and hiding it from the Barnetts. And at this point, the Barnetts started to feel uneasy and began to question what was really going on with their little girl. The Barnetts started to suspect that something was off about Natalia. They noticed that she didn't seem interested in playing with toys appropriate for her age. Additionally, she didn't enjoy playing with children of her age either. She preferred interacting with older kids. And something else they felt that was off was Natalia's well-developed English and her limited understanding of Ukrainian. Christine found this extremely suspicious. On one occasion, while Christine was working at her daycare, Natalia made a comment that raised further concerns. She said, gosh, these kids are exhausting. I don't know how you do it. These remarks startled the Barnetts because it sounded unusually mature for a six or seven year old child. Interestingly, the Barnetts decided to bring a friend over to their house who could actually speak Ukrainian. Natalia became upset and ran to her room, seemingly unable to understand the conversation. She hid and refused to speak to them for days. Now the Barnetts would go on to interpret this behavior as Natalia being caught in deception, suggesting that she may actually not be from the Ukraine. It's worth noting that a significant portion of the population in the Ukraine does indeed speak Russian, so the language barrier itself really means nothing. The Barnetts revealed that Natalia's behavior took a disturbing turn, becoming violent towards other children and even towards them. They were taken aback and felt a sense of fear. It was at that moment that they realized that they needed to reassess the situation. The Barnetts shared that Natalia made threats to harm family members, including expressing intentions of stabbing them while they were asleep. There were also allegations that she had poured bleach into Christine's coffee. Furthermore, Christine disclosed that Natalia would make alarming statements and drop pictures depicting her killing family members. She would describe a scenario where she would roll them up in a blanket and bury them in the backyard. Now this created an atmosphere of unease, especially when Natalia would stand over them while they would sleep at night. Now the situation escalated to the point where the Barnetts felt compelled to hide all sharp objects in the house. Allegedly, Natalia even attacked a baby and refused to go to sleep and claimed that she would hear voices at night. The Barnetts even mentioned that she would jump out of moving cars and would smear blood all over the mirrors in the bathroom. And it was at that point they felt they needed to call 911. Now, all these incidents is what led them to test Natalia for her age. According to the Barnetts, one of the doctors allegedly stated that Natalia confessed to him that she was actually 18 years old and was enjoying terrorizing the family. It's important to note that this statement has never officially been confirmed. Another doctor supposedly informed them that Natalia was not a child, but rather a grown woman. According to the Barnetts, the doctor described her as a psychopath trapped in a little person's body. And they were warned that she could be dangerous. Now, the medical tests that they had conducted had suggested that Natalia was at least 14 years old or possibly older. It was her bone density test specifically that had raised questions about her age. I think it's worth pointing out that even if she was 14, that would still make her a child. So none of what's about to happen is all right. In 2012, the Barnetts decided to take action. They were no longer willing to suffer at the hands of Natalia. They were able to successfully change her birth year to 1989, making her 22 years old according to the Marion County Superior Court. Now, the reason the Barnett supposedly cited for this change was to ensure that Natalia could receive the necessary help, as she wouldn't have access to any assistance if she was under 18. For some reason, that just doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, they clearly believe that she was older than 18 years old. Now, this is where things get really strange. Michael Barnett had then decided to rent an apartment for Natalia. Now, this apartment was just down the road from their home. Now, Natalia would go on to live independently for a year while they lived nearby. The Barnetts would visit twice every week, and they had even gone as far as hiring a home health aide. 
They did this to ensure that Natalia could adapt to her new surroundings and manage to live on her own. And according to Michael, she seemed capable of living independently, going to grocery stores and arranging her own apartment. In her discharge papers from a hospital in 2012, Natalia expressed her desire to cut off the entire family. This is what marked a significant shift in their relationship and further added to the complexity of the situation. Now, during her appearance on Dr. Phil, Natalia portrayed herself as someone who didn't know how to shop for groceries and claimed to have no money for food. But Michael contradicted this by stating that she was receiving food stamps and they were even covering all the expenses of her apartment. But it gets weirder than that because in 2013, the Barnetts made the decision to move to Canada due to their oldest son, Jake. Jake had been offered the opportunity to study in a prestigious school in Canada. Now, Jake was only 14 years old at the time, turning 15, and it was clear that he couldn't navigate the situation alone, so the entire family decided to move. They either sold or gave away all their possessions, except for their clothes and their cars. And they did this all in order to support Jake's education in Canada. Now, they allegedly arranged for Natalia to live in a different apartment, providing support and assistance from a distance. Now, after their move to Canada, the Barnetts claimed that they only cut off contact with Natalia after receiving a letter informing them that she had changed the beneficiary of her insurance to an unfamiliar name. This only further made them believe that she was trying to deceive them in the first place. Now, after Christine attempted to contact Natalia regarding this, she just never got a response. And in 2014, Natalia was reportedly evicted from her apartment and subsequently moved with another family. The situation took an even stranger turn when the lady from this family shared her encounter with Natalia. She stated that she had several children and just lived a few houses down from Natalia. Curiously, she approached Natalia one day and asked her her age, to which she claimed that she was 22. However, when the woman observed Natalia's appearance, she didn't believe her to be 22 at all. Instead, she appeared to be eight or nine. Notably, the woman expressed that Natalia didn't exhibit the mental maturity expected of a 22-year-old. And unfortunately, in 2014, Michael and Christine went through a divorce. They later explained that the immense pressure and stress caused by the Natalia situation became too overwhelming for their marriage. Natalia's new family, Anton and Cynthia Mann, filed a petition in March 2016 to become Natalia's legal guardians. To do so, they needed to restore Natalia's original date of birth to 2003. Naturally, the Barnetts objected to this change because it would imply that they had left an eight-year-old child alone in an apartment for a year. Then on September 11th, 2019, the Barnetts faced charges of neglect for allegedly abandoning a child and had to turn themselves in. Now they were quickly released on bail and hired a lawyer, which added a whole nother level of shit to the situation as they were facing charges for leaving a child on her own. However, the Barnetts maintained their stance that Natalia was not a child, she was just scamming people. Now Natalia asserted that she was just a child when her adoptive family abandoned her. She supported her claim with evidence as the Daily Mail TV managed to locate a woman in the Ukraine who claimed that she was Natalia's birth mother. And according to this woman, Natalia was indeed a child. The birth mother had shared that the doctors advised her to leave the baby, stating that it would ruin her life due to her condition. Now, there was a supposed document that Daily Mail TV had essentially gotten their hands on, but were prevented from taking pictures of it. But it would go on to prove that Natalia was indeed a child at the time. Now, over the course of the past few years, the case has slowly made its way through the legal system. And as of October 2022, Michael was found not guilty of his charges. And in later, March 2023, Christine's charges were also dismissed due to lack of evidence, which I find mind blowing because the evidence is just all over the place. So where does this leave us now? And what happened to the Barnetts? And most importantly, what happened to Natalia? Now, I'm one of those people, like many of you, whose opinion has gone back and forth because a lot of the facts and a lot of the things that have been said just don't make any sense, really. Now, many people even believe that the movie The Orphan was based on this story, which I can tell you that it is not, but Natalia would go on to say that many of Christine's claims were based on that movie. Now, in recent times, an entire docu-series was released on Natalia Grace. It primarily focuses on Natalia's journey. Now, in this docu-series, a DNA test provides evidence that Natalia was indeed a child when all of this happened. Based off of all the studies and everything being analyzed, you're more closer to 22. 
which is pretty close to what you think you're almost 20. This one little piece of paper throws every single lie that the Barnetts has said right into the trash with a match. That means the Barnetts abandoned an eight-year-old girl for a year and left her in an apartment alone to fend for herself. Now in the finale, it appeared that things were heading in a positive direction. Natalia even confronted Michael in the docuseries. And Michael would go on to apologize, claiming that it was all Christine's fault and he allowed her to manipulate him. Are you sorry about what she did to me? I am horrified by what she has done to you. Now, during the docuseries, Natalia finds herself legally adopted by Anton and Cynthia Mann. This was a couple who actually became her legal guardians earlier in the story. Now, I wish I could say this is our happily ever after, but it's not. Now, in the closing moments of the entire season, the producers went on to say that they received a phone call from Anton and Cynthia Mann. If she lay to us, we have held her hostage. Right now, it's like we're the enemy. Natalia stabbing her family in the back. Over at his quick five. She's done other things too. But this was a new low. Natalia does not have emotions for nothing but herself. Anton and Cynthia went on to claim that they as well had been deceived by Natalia. I really don't know what to say. I feel like a tennis ball just back and forth. I wish there was more context in this phone call, but I believe that they're going to release another season. So hopefully we'll get some closure and I will give you an update part two at some point. It's also worth noting that a DNA test cannot give you the exact age of an individual, but just an estimate. So regardless, we know that Natalia was a child when she was abandoned. Now, all the footage I've seen with Anton and Cynthia Mann seems like they have a really beautiful relationship with Natalia. So I want to know where it all went wrong. Leave your theories in the comments below. And I want to remind you that hitting the like, the subscribe, and the bell go a long way to helping this channel out, as it lets me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm making. So until next time, Stay safe, and I will see you when the lights go out.